Hello, welcome back to How to RPG. All about the monsters today. Preparing monsters, game masters, you want to prepare those monsters, I know you do. So I'm showing you the Tome of Beasts from Kobold Press and Creature Codex uh, because they're very good books and I thought I would show them off before I flick on over to my face. Um, this is the channel where I talk about role-playing games, uh, today it's all about Game Master preparation, I'm going to put a poll up for you, and uh, this is the channel where we live stream during a cyclone, that's right, there is currently a cyclone, Cyclone Gabriel is um, battering my country and battering my home right now, if I get cut off, you'll know why, <laughs> because it's possible. Um, power cuts have occurred, uh, they happened yesterday, uh, it's entirely possible that I could get cut off and you won't see me again, who knows, um, or I'll just lose this particular live, uh, live feed, <laughs> and I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but it is definitely a, a possibility for today. Now, for those of you who are interested, um, like all of the stuff we do here, it's uh, it's intended to help you make your own stuff. It isn't really. I'm not trying to um, give you stuff that is um, already fixed and set. It's really about you taking what we do here and then building on it from there. Okay, so that's what the intention is for today. All right, so <clears throat> grab some food, some drink. Make sure you are comfortable. Get ready. I am hoping that my voice will hold out. You never know about these things. Apparently it's getting worse. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, let's um, plow on into this. And uh, <laughs> this is exactly how I feel. Uh, there we go. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about role-playing games. That's right, role-playing games. Um, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons can be in there, absolutely. So this is the Game Master preparation, and I'm coming coming you coming at you from the, the perspective of uh, building monsters, making monsters, creating your own monsters, homebrewing your own stuff. This is lesson three, where we go through the basics for that process. And uh, one of the things I usually do is I give an overview, some objectives, and then I give you all the meat and potatoes. Okay, and do the same thing today. So the overview and uh, what we're going to sort of be covering, this is the different types of monster stat builders that are out there. There's quite a few different types, not as many as I'd hoped, but there are a lot of monster stat block builders that you can utilize. And I'm not just talking about Dungeons and Dragons, I'm talking about other game systems as well. Inspiration for monster creation, where can you get that from? Monster building process, what's that like? The monster story questions you probably want to ask yourself. Uh, then we're going to go through monster design and creation. And then uh, some miscellaneous recommendations for those of you who may need that assistance. Now with everything that I do, my objectives are always to explain the process of building a monster at the concept, at the stat block, and for any role-playing game you're, you, you're playing. Um, I can't cover every system because I don't know every single role-playing system, but the basic gist of it. Uh, demonstrate how to build a monster concept in the stat block, so we we'll demonstrate that uh, for a role-playing game, and then allow a practice example on some software making, say, a homebrew monster. We may even do it with pen and pencil in the future. Now, a big thank you for today because uh, this live stream is actually sponsored by World Anvil, where you can put your monster creations, if you like. It is uh, basically taking your paper and your physical folder and you're doing it online so it's a now a dis digital place to store everything you create and they cover pretty much everything under the sun it's free to sign up and of course there are pay tiers involved as well which i have actually very little understanding of <laughs> but but i do know um, that they have a lot of resources out there that you don't have to pay for at all um, so go check them out you'll find down in the description a little bit on them if you're interested Okay, going straight into this. Inspiration for monster creation. What sort of stuff are we talking about here? Well, um, actually, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit because I really, before we go into monster um, inspiration, what we should be talking about is really like 
what sort of monster builders could you use? So let's take a back step here. And um, I'm going to just cycle back to something else for a second. There is a bunch of different monster builders on the internet. Whether you believe it or not, there are. Um, the first one I want to mention is um, the Pathfinder 2E Monster Tool. It's called PF2E Monster Tool. And so I would definitely, if you are playing Pathfinder 2nd Ed Edition, this will allow you to build your own monster stat blocks. If you're playing something like Call of Cthulhu, uh, then there is a, a, a generator, a creator that you can use called the Call of Cthulhu Creature Generator. Um, if you Google these names, you'll find them pretty easily. Uh, the next one would be the Starfinder Monster Builder. So if you are aware of Starfinder, it's a role-playing game uh, that is created by Paizo. And it's relatively new, I would say, compared to a lot of other games out there. And there is actually a monster builder for that out there as well. Now, if you're playing something like Dungeons & Dragons 5e, then there's a tool called the D&D 5e Stat Block Builder. It's pretty good. It does a pretty good job of what you want. Uh, there are quite a lot. I mean, if you go looking for monster creators and monster builders, the vast majority are associated to um, 5e. I mean, if to, to try and find something for 4e or 3.5 or any other version of the game, very difficult. Um, now, there's also Gifglyph's Monster Maker. That's not too bad. It does a pretty good job of what you want, uh, want to, to do with it. Each one of them have their, um, their, 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 I guess, their positives and their negatives. There's the Monster Shuffler. Uh, this is probably one of the I wasn't expecting to find the Monster Shuffler, uh, but it is there as a tool if you want to use it. Okay, so those are the different types of monster builders that I've been able to find, and if you are aware of more, you'll hopefully let me know, and I will add them to my hopefully growing list of things that you can use. Okay, now let's return to inspiration for monster creation, because that's why you're here, right? Okay, so I would suggest start off with your brainstorming, um, on a page of paper, just one single piece of paper, it doesn't matter what size it is, using either pen or pencil, writing down words or drawing a quick sketch. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to look that great, and you just use that as a sort of a jumping off point to get an idea of what you're going to do with your monster. Now where can you get your ideas from? Pull them from books, if you like books and fantasy and science fiction, pull it from there. Movies, I like movies, video games work, even music, if you're a person who's more musical in nature, you know, that's, your, that's the thing that you sort of um, gravitate towards, then try music. I know a lot of people can use that for inspiration as well. Um, Google search, Pinterest. Pinterest art has a lot of different ideas. People make stuff all the time and put it up there. Art station, deviant art websites, all of those are really good uh, at giving you some ideas around the kind of monster you might want to create. Now, for those of you who want to go wind the clock right back, um, if we go right back to the advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the concept of combining real world animals and fantasy monsters was quite common. Um, and it's another way of actually creating monsters by combining a fantasy monster and a real world monster, or just combining different real world monsters together, um, or real world animals, not real world monsters, <laughs> real world animals. Um, this is an easy way to create a monster, uh, even combining different fantasy monsters. So there's lots of there's lots of permuta permutations and combinations you can make with this. You're going to get some absolutely bat crazy stuff out of this for sure. I agree, but it's still um, a way of developing something that's unique and has that hasn't been done before, particularly if that's what you're trying to achieve here. And I know a lot of people are. Okay, building monsters, building monsters. Uh, the first thing you want to do is create a, a monster concept. Whatever the concept is, it may be as simple as its appearance. It may be as simple as it does something. Um, it may be as simple as it has a name. Like there's going to be some sort of concept. I've already kind of discussed that concept creation process. Um, we're going to build on this a little bit more for you. Uh, describe the monster's appearance. So write it down in words. Uh, select an image if you want to select an image. If you can find an image that fits it, or do, if you found an image to start off with that you built off from, then great. Draw a picture if you're able to draw the picture of the uh, the monster. 
um, get your children to draw the monster if you have children uh, and you don't mind that being the case because I know a lot of you are parents so you may be more interested in just getting your kids to draw the monster for you and um, you can also use software like if you are able to use software there's a bunch of different artificial intelligence art software packages and servers out there. There's Midjourney Artificial Intelligence, you just type that in, and there, there's Starry AI, Stable Diffusion, and Hot Pot AI. Each of them have their benefits and drawbacks. They will not give you exactly what you want. They can be very hit and miss, but it is new technology that people are utilizing to come up with stuff that they wouldn't, it's not like you're going to be going commissioning somebody to draw this monster, okay? Uh, nobody's doing this. If you're making your own homebrew stuff, you're probably not doing that because you're not publishing, so you're not worried about that sort of thing. You would never go and pay for an artist. But if you are interested, that's fine. Otherwise, these are some options. Um, develop some special abilities for your monster. What does it do that is special, that makes it stand out? Uh, does it have flaming breath? Uh, does it have... Uh, strange skin that makes it uh, translucent and, and it's able to actually become invisible. Uh, there's all sorts of things it might do. Give the monster a name that matches the monster concept. Now you might be thinking, why did I not name the monster first? Because actually naming the monster is not necessarily the first step. It can often be probably more difficult than any other aspect is trying to come up with a name that you can pronounce and actually fits what you're trying to get across. Make up a story for your monster, make up a history for your monster, ecology, habitat, society, all of those things. Um, even consider the, the concept of how it fights in combat, how it fights, or even if, if it doesn't even fight, is it that kind of monster? Is it not designed to be a combatant monster? Give it some sort of law, okay? Um, build the monster stat block and do all the mathematics. It's usually the last thing you do. And uh, Please don't chase the mathematical unicorn in a monster stat block when you're creating anything because there's the, a tendency to feel like the, the maths has to be perfect. And the reality is that everything you're doing with mathematics behind your monster creation is kind of arbitrary. Like the creation of a monster in its first place uh, in terms of conceptual is arbitrary. It's just what you kind of think should fit together. And the mathematics is just to represent that. And it's it's not an exact science, okay? If it was an exact science, there'd actually be somewhere you could go to in a, in a university to study monster stat block design. Uh, and so that it always came out perfect. And even if there is, which I very much doubt, um, I can assure you that game designers do not make stuff that's balanced. So don't worry about that sort of thing. Um, it's just a basic representation mathematically. All right, so we've done a lot of the, the basic steps, but we're definitely not finished. Monster story. Now, I went and approached AJ Pickett for information on how to do this. And I remember when I sat down and I was building this and I said, um, AJ, um, I have a bunch of things here. How do you feel about looking at what I have written down? And he said, sure, Fred. And um, thankfully, I do actually know him. <laughs> so, so we went through this, and this is the monster story questions for you that you want to try and answer. You don't have to answer all these questions, but the more of the more of these questions you can answer, the better. Where does the monster normally live? What's its normal habitat or environment that it lives in? Why is the monster in its current location for this adventure? or for your campaign if it's not living in its normal habitat or environment. What does the monster want? All monsters want something, so figure out what that is. Or what does the monster want from the characters? That's an extension from that question, because it might be different, you know, the monster, what the monster wants in general from the world might be different from what it wants from the characters. What makes the monster unique? What does it make stand out? Is it the way that it looks? Is it something that it does? Is it its purpose? You decide. What makes the monster scary if it's meant to be a scary monster? So if you're going to make a scary monster, you have to figure out what makes a monster scary. And then that's what you need to embed into your, your story aspect. And uh, we're not talking necessarily about what it looks like. It's, it's going to be the story around what it does or how it interacts. 
possibly combined a few different ideas or abilities to make this possible. Um, what does it feed on? What does your monster feed on? How does it actually um, survive? Okay. What is the monster's territorial range? Now, the, the thing with territorial range, there's a thing called territorial range. This is how far it will move from its lair or nest. Okay. And then there's another thing that is called um, space. So there's a certain amount of space that a creature or animal monster will need to survive. And that will be much wider than its territorial range, which sounds strange. What it means basically is if it needs to go beyond its territorial range, this is what it would normally do from its some um, home or nest or lair, um, it can extend further. And this is usually to indicate that it may have to move locations from time to time to continue feeding on whatever is in that area. How does the monster sense creatures or prey in the environment? Does it use its eyes, its ears, its nose? Does it use um, vibrations, touch? Um, does it have some sort of supernatural ability to detect its prey? What does the monster ignore? All monsters and creatures and animals ignore something, things that they're not interested in, and they will move past them. So figure out what that might be. How does the monster communicate? Is it using uh, body language, scent? Um, is it using some other, is it using clicking? Um, is it, is it, does it actually have a language? Maybe this monster actually communicates in a spoken language with a written language as well, or is it just a spoken language and no written language? How does the monster reproduce? In other words, that's right, uh, we're getting into the sexual reproduction of your monster, if there is one. Some monsters don't reproduce, sometimes there's just one. Um, probably created by a wizard, accidentally. How does it change the environment by living in that specific place? Because all animals and creatures affect their environment, and so your monster will be doing something similar. So consider those these are all questions that um, line you up for figuring out how your monster will fit within a story by giving it a story and answering a few questions. And you don't have to do all these things, but it's really nice and helpful when you do because you have plenty to play with in the future. Okay, monster design and creation. This is where we start getting into sort of the more complicated aspects of things. So first off, Select the difficulty you want for your monster. This is where we're starting to look at the mathematics, okay? We're looking at the different special abilities, its traits and stuff like that. Now this is the mathematical design process rather than the conceptual and the story element. What is the role of your monster? Is it a solo monster? Does it only fight alone? Does it only exist and live alone, okay? Is it a solitary creature? Is it a leader? Does it lead other monsters? Is it a soldier? In other words, does it fight in the front line? Um, is it designed basically, I um, mean, consider it like a soldier ant. Uh, does it do all of the hard yakka in, in battle? Is it art, an artillery unit? In other words, uh, is it, are you dealing with a monster that has um, got spell casting abilities or uh, maybe they only fight at range with bows and crossbows or some other projectile? Does it spit acid? Is it an artillery unit? Controller. So a controller is affecting the environment around you to hamper and give it benefits. Now that might to um, slow down uh, whatever it's hunting, its prey or its victim, or it might be to um, help and assist it in a battle or a fight. Is it a skirmisher? Does it move in and out of a battle um, um, very quickly, uh, changing position? Uh, does it hide? Is it an ambusher? So skirmisher. Now these are all concepts you may be familiar with because they come from Dungeons and Dragons 40, but they are concepts that actually do apply to monster design overall. They're just spelled out. Select the ability or attribute scores for your monster that makes sense. Now whether you're using Dungeons and Dragons and using strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom and charisma, you don't have to use that. Maybe your monster and the system you're using only has four different attributes that are so assigned to them. So figure out what those are, and then, look, you don't have to get this perfect, okay? It is just a best guess. How long the monster will survive, or how much health does it have? So we're now determining how many hit points it has, or how many health points it has. 
So we want to figure out roughly how many rounds in a battle do we want the monster to survive before it's either defeated or it has to flee. Okay. Assign monster features or traits that are always in effect. So when I say features and traits, what I mean is something like if it's got an, a camouflage ability, the camouflage ability doesn't recharge, it's not a limited resource, it's always available to that monster or creature. Um, so it never turns off, okay? This is what a, a feature or a trait is kind of what I'm trying to communicate. Now you can also, on top of that, create special powers or special abilities for your monster. And these might be a limited resource, but more importantly, the thing that changes them is um, the creature has to decide consciously to use that ability or special power. Unlike a feature or a trait where it doesn't need to actually think about using it, it just has it. Okay, It's just always there, it's always on. So there's the difference, is now we're giving it something that it can actually do. So as the game master, you will use this feature um, specifically when it's your turn to do something. What sort of attacks does the monster make with, uh, with the mechanics of the game? Uh, this might be uh, making a bite or a claw attack or a tail attack or anything that you want. Spitting acids, spitting fire, breathing fire, you name it. All that sort of stuff. Figure out what it is in terms of the attacks. Now you might decide that spitting acid and breathing fire should fit into the special powers and abilities of the monster rather than its main attacks. Okay, which might be just limited to uh, making a claw attack um, or a bite or some sort of tail attack or something like that. Okay, um, make the mathematical adjustments to your stat block for the monster. Once you've got those basic pieces in place, then make any adjustments that you need to based on your system. Uh, check the monster stat block for the mathematical difficulty. Okay, so you, what you're doing is you're checking to see if it kind of fits within all the other mon monsters that have been made for that system. Now, uh, for Dungeons and Dragons um, 5e, that is challenge rating. For other systems, that would be monster level or um, uh, monster difficulty. There's lots of different terminology out there. Uh, consult the now if you're playing 5e and a lot of my advice around this is now going back to this um, 5e and that is consult the dungeon master guide for dungeons and dragons 5e on page 274 and this provides a quick monster stat block table which i suggest is probably your best tool if you're dealing with 5e uh, building the monster's special abilities and attacks whether it doesn't actually matter what system you use you can kind of port a lot of this stuff over very easily uh, and you'll find that in the um, Dungeon Master Guide for 5e on, on a table. There's two pages, it's page 280 to 281, and this gives you monster features, okay? Things that you can put into your game, but also monster powers, not just monster features and traits. And then um, if you want to go and check your challenge rating, which is frankly almost a complete waste of time because it's not a very good measure of how difficult something is in 5e. You can go to 5e tools and it has a challenge rating calculator on that website and that will uh, let you figure out if you've got your maths right even if the, um, the system of challenge rating is really quite useless to you, particularly beyond level 5 unfortunately. It's just one of the natures of that particular system. Uh, other game systems may fare better. Okay, miscellaneous recommendations. I always want to give out miscellaneous recommendations when doing this, and these are my recommendations to you. The monster will always feel unfinished. I'm a perfectionist, so it's even worse for me. Okay, There's, It's very hard for me to put something down and say, I am complete, this is perfect, because that's what a perfectionist wants. So don't let the perfectionist in you, if that's what you have got to contend with, stop you from completing your monster. Get it as close to you need it, um, um, need it to be and accept that there might be a few things you're not completely happy with. Um, remember, a monster that you create is not a completed um, uh, creation. You, you are perfectly fine to adjust and uh, uh, make changes later on. You don't have to sort of say, okay, I've got this far and I'm going to test it and uh, if there are any um, problems I won't be able to change them. No, you can because you're not printing this thing. Um, you're not publishing it. It's for your game. So it won't matter. You can change it. 
It's easy to get fixated on the stat block building aspect of monster creation. But ultimately, try to remember that when you're running a campaign or an adventure for a role-playing game or Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, what's actually important is the narrative and the story that the monster um, is going to present. Now, clearly, you know, if, if you want your monster to be a combat uh, machine, then obviously you want it to be able to work at the stat block level. But often your monsters work better when they are in, in, interacting with your player characters and it's part of the story and narrative in some way. And many monsters never ever have to actually fight. Now that not be, might not be because they, it has nothing to do with the fact that they aren't a, a monster designed for combat. Maybe they are a monster designed for combat, but they're simply so powerful that the players really need to just run away. So you don't really need to build a stat block in the first place because fighting it would be silly. Like, you don't go and fight a Tarrasque or Godzilla because, one, it's way too powerful for any being, okay? Uh, unless you're another Godzilla, it ain't going to work, okay? And there's only uh, one Godzilla and there's only one Tarrasque. So, <laughs> so yeah, just consider those. Story is probably going to be more useful to you rather than fixating on the mathematics of a stat block. Avoid judging the value and quality of your monsters. This is very easy to do. Now, other people might decide to sit down and judge and value the quality of what you've created, but it's none of their business, frankly, okay? And unless you're publishing, it's actually none of their business. And whatever experience and perspective they have, there's too many people out there that have way too much to say about people's homebrew. Just do what you think is going to work, and if you need to make changes, make changes. And as I said, you don't need to worry about this sort of thing because you're not making it to sell on an open market. So those are the, uh, the tidbits and advice that I have for you on um, building monsters. And I want to thank you, everybody who uh, showed up uh, for this live stream, and uh, I do appreciate it. I would like to a big special thank you to all of my patrons, everybody who's watching the, uh, the live stream, and to World Anvil for supporting me uh, with this program. And hey, till next time. Keep rolling those 20s. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Let's have a look and see what people have to say about what we are doing today. Do, do, do. So we're going to go through the chat, and then uh, it's, a, it's a work day. Um, game master preparation means we build something. We actually make something and I have put up a poll asking you a question because it's an important question because this is uh, something we started last time. Um, we actually started this as part of the monster lore and workshop um, last week but I thought since we we're talking about monsters as part of game master preparation we would continue down this this track. So this is why I put that poll up. Um, let me go to chat in a second. Let me just see the poll. We've got 11 votes. Do we continue making a monster special power and traits D20, D100, not D20, D100 table? Yes, 55%. No, 0%. Undecided, 27%. Just watching. We're doing it. We're going to continue. We got pretty close. And last time we had AJ had given us a hand. But I think AJ's um, a little bit under the weather today and he's probably also working because he's spitting out like two videos every single day at least I think it's two two a day that's a that's a lot <laughs> he's really working hard all right um hello Noroak Noroak is a patron and supports me on Patreon thank you mate um it's the Monster Mash live stream I'll definitely try and make it for this oh well I'm, I'm I can see you are here which is good news um Nacho Nacho Man also a patron thank you for coming for today um, today I appreciate it Overboard, how are you doing? Overboard um, is a patron, also a moderator, been with me quite a while now, um, so I do appreciate you being here. Oh, there is a real world monsters, um, Fred. Uh, they are just hidden behind behind you. Roll a, a nine. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. So Overboard um, is... I said he was a patron and a moderator, but he's also got a YouTube channel that deals with miniatures and terrain and reviews, and you might want to check it out. 
Yeah, yeah, he's right here, right here. Okay, behind the noobs GM screen. Hello, welcome back. I recognize the name. This is a fun part of uh, running my games. Um, I use old Ed Edition monster manuals for inspiration. 4E monster manual was good in my opinion. Um, I'm not a fan of the 4E monster manuals, but I, I do, I, I absolutely agree that I... I like the older monster manuals. Um, I have the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons um, Second Ed Edition uh, Monstrous Manual, and I believe I I might be wrong, but I believe that somebody is sending me the Beastry for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Ed Edition, which would be I'm pretty sure that's Nacho Nacho sending me that. So if you guys are wondering what's going on in terms of uh, behind the scenes. My patrons, not only do they um, contribute every month to what I do here, but a lot of them have been sending me stuff. So Esper the Bard is sending me his book, uh, which is I'm really looking forward to when it shows up, because it's going to be a good product. Um, I know that for sure. Um, I've, I've seen what he does. And um, also Nacho is sending me Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Ed Edition. Now I believe, I believe you're sending, it's the, what was it? Oh, it's the player's guide and the game master game master or dungeon master um, book. I can't remember if it was a beast tree. I can't remember if it was you or somebody else. And then I've got advanced dungeons and dragons. Yeah, I think it's the beast tree. I think it's the beast tree. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe. Hmm. Hard to know. Um. Anyway, I'm sure <laughs> Norok's here and he can tell me if it. Uh. Sorry. Uh. Night show can tell me. And then Dan. Dan. Uh, also a patron. He's sending me. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Second Ed Edition, the Player's Handbook, and the Dungeon Master Guide, because I've already got the Monster Box. So, should be should be a fun time. We will be going back in time a lot. I have all of the Monster Manuals for Four E. Um, I have the whole bunch, and uh, unfortunately, I don't feel like I get to use them that much. I know a lot of people want them for the powers they used to have, because there's a lot of different powers in there. Hello Seeker, how are you? Afternoon, I got a question about a D&D monster, if there's a, a free talk component to what's um, going on. We always, this, I, when I finish my presentation, it's always open Seeker to talk about anything. Later. And I'll ask Pierce later. No, 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 you can ask the questions, because as I'm typing stuff in, and as we're making stuff, because that's what we're going to do in a second, uh, we're definitely going to, I'll answer questions, don't you worry. It'll keep, keep, keep things moving. Yeah, yes, all wizards create things. Absolutely, Noroak. Um, I'll start. The monster blood is a sweet as as finest wine. <laughs> I feel like that's a trait, isn't it? That's a trait. Um, now, Javan. Javan. I think it's Javan. God, do, do, I have a, do I keep pronouncing your name differently every time you're in here? I feel like I do. Good stuff, Fred. I think the narrative um, interactions of characters and monsters outweigh anything needed for mechanical perfection, certainly in my group. So I've, I've, I've tried to communicate to people many times that playing, say, for example, playing Dungeons & Dragons, I don't know necessarily about other role-playing games, but for me, it's all about the interaction between the player's characters and the monster. That's what it is for me. And uh, it might not necessarily be that for you, because you're, you, if you're running a, a fantasy world, and it may not be D&D, &D, it might be your own creation, that might not necessarily be the focus. But that's what I love, is I love the monster interaction stuff. Okay, Seeker, there's a 5e monster called the uh, Forsworn, and I cannot for the life of me work out its problematic bonus action. Phantasmic battalion oh my god might need a grid though oh gosh i don't know that i can answer that question easily for sworn um yeah i don't i don't even know what what book is it in the Forsworn. do you know what book it's in that would probably be helpful if i knew what book it's in if you know which book it is in um seeker let me know um, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to do a grid with this because, um, I mean, I've got a grid out and I suppose I could move those books out of the way. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to make that happen. Shiner81, hello, how are you? 
Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is we're going to start doing, If you, I'll, I'll come back to this after the break in about uh, 24 minutes. And if you can figure out which book it is, um, Seeker, and I can find it, then I'll see what I can do. But let's let's crack on in and just continue on our merry way uh, doing what we were doing before, which was um, building a D100 table for Monster Pals, and that's really where I want to go. So let's, let's go do that um, now. Make sure I get the right window. Is that it? That does look like it. It looks like it's the right size. Um, I'm going to transition this over. And I need people to let me know if you feel like this is too small. If I need to make the print bigger, I can probably expand this. Okay. I can definitely make it larger if need be. And I will grab my phone. So you will let me know if I need to make it bigger. And I will just grab my phone on this over here. Uh, okay. Get myself comfortable. Glass is going to be on and off all day. I can see that now. Um, what are we? What are we currently watching? Somebody's on. Is it? There it is. There it is. I see it. No, don't do that. I don't want the sound. No, no, go away. Skip the ads. <sighs> okay, all right. Getting myself into the into the groove. Uh, what's this? Dragon Lance. I can copy paste it here. Yeah, copy paste it here into the uh, the live chat. That's that's fine. Do that. Um. It's like a Javan, 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 ah, oh, Javan. Okay, I get it, Javan. Anyway, sorry, I won't derail the uh, content. Um, no worries, folks. No, no, it's uh, stick it in, and if I if I can figure out where my head's going with this, then we can do that. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I view the people in this chat as D and D gurus. I I don't know about D and D gurus. You need to let me know, people. Oh, by the way, uh, this is not a cut and paste require. Um, I don't know. Make a copy of this. Um, what's this? What's this overboard? I may send you a copy of Broken Weave, Fred. A, I think it can add one to my Kickstarter pledge. Okay. I, I'm not sure what this is all about. Broken Weave. What is a Broken Weave? The monster scales skin um, can become as hot as burning embers. Uh, looks good to me, easy to read. Okay, okay, so that's fine. I'm a D&D &D loony. You're a D&D &D loony? Really? Are you really a D&D &D loony? I don't know that you really are a D&D &D loony. Um, uh, Forsworn summons a battalion of ghostly soldiers to its aid. The ghost soldiers fill a 10-foot um, cube centered on the Forsworn, moving the Forsworn with the Forsworn moves, and last until the start of the Forsworn's next turn. All the ghostly soldiers are present. The area they occupy is considered difficult terrain for all creatures except the Forsworn, and the Forsworn reach, reaches, reach, reach for weapon attacks increases by 10 feet to end. I don't understand what what the problem is there, Force um, um, Seeker. I I, I it, it seems reasonably easy to understand what's going on there. Um, so I'm I'm a little perplexed as to what. Uh, actually, I might even make this bigger. I'll make it bigger, and I'll just do that, and I will adjust uh, my head. Uh, do I need to do my adjust my head? Do, do we really want to see bigger Fred? Oh no, I don't really like the idea. <laughs> but we'll do, we'll do, we'll just update it. That's okay. All right, sweet. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I, it seems really pretty obvious. It's uh, it's a cube. It follows it. It's difficult terrain. Um, it moves with them. So it's. I'm not sure that there's a. I mean, what am I? What am I supposed to do with that? I don't. I don't know what the. I don't understand the question. Um, anyway, let's let's get into this. Uh, there are a couple of things that people have already put into here. 
uh, and I am kind of feeling like I might need to start separating because we got up to 83. So I think for now I'll just I'm chuck it into here and if I need to make a second, second document I will. Um, let's do that. How do you center a, 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 a 10 foot cube on a minion? Well, you just you just center it on on. I mean, it's a ten foot cube, and so uh, you're thinking, oh, uh, it's a it's a point rather than a square, right? So the miniature takes up five foot by five foot. How can you center it? You just position it, the 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 center of the cube, poof, the point, rather than a square on it. That's it. That's all it is. Um, the squares around it are going to be partially covered rather than fully covered that's all that it is i don't think that the i don't think the requirement would be that anybody within the five foot square area um needs to be completely covered that the miniature needs to be completely covered if that's what you mean do you know what I mean partial partial coverage is enough to affect the creature does that make sense okay okay so let's let's make some hashtag suggest suggest some monster special features or powers uh, um, abilities abilities not features um, abilities abilities or powers checking that in yeah, don't try to snap it, um, snap it to a grid like, uh, yeah, just stick the center of the, the cube over the miniature. That's it. That's all you need to worry about. Okay. Okay, so now I've got to find the things that uh, have been put in. I think Nacho has already done this, a few of them. Okay. All right. So I might jump back and forth to make life easier for myself. Otherwise, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to put the glasses on. This is going to drive me nuts otherwise. Um, whoops, it moved. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, copy and just transition. And this was so much easier last week, just dropping things in here. That's a pretty good idea there, Norok. You're always very, very good at this. This is one of the things... Um, I like is that you're always very really good at that and that there copy this one and I drop it over uh, if you start seeing the screen going a little bit wacky as um, as OBS tries to figure out what the heck I'm up to I can understand um, I won't probably do that all the time. I'm just trying to catch up on what I, I missed. Now, uh, moving back, trying to find what else you'd put in here. Um, the monster's scale skin can become as hot as burning embers. Ah, okay. Uh, the monster's scales slash skin um, can become as hot as burning embers. I don't want to say that it can become, I almost feel like we just make it like that all the time. Make it a trait would be more fun, I suspect. But so anyway, so I've got that one down. Norak, we've got that in. Was there something else? Did somebody start typing in stuff here? No. No? Okay, good. So um, I've caught up. Whoa. Osmosis leached. Um, dehydrates nearby enemies. Ooh, Seeker. That's not bad, dude. That's not bad. Feature. Adrenaline vampire uses victims' fear venomes as a source of energy. Jeez, so you're um you're uh, you're on fire, baby. Okay. All right, let's um let's get these ideas down. These are these are pretty good. 
I mean, these are pretty good. And monster feature. And it's vampire, adrenaline vampire, adrenaline vampire. We'll do that. Uses victims. Uh, victims energy yes sweet got you the victims fear fear phenomes okay I think that's right <laughs> I hope so and then the other one was something about leeching osmosis leech I'm, I'm gonna try really hard to keep up with you people today I really will um, I'm, any anything that will get it done, even if the uh, the live feed looks to, to terrible, I'm just going to try to keep up. Okay, dehydrates nearby enemies. <laughs> Osmosis leech. That's <laughs> really really clever. Um, what else we got here? With the adrenaline vampire. Okay, have me more appropriate, but still, of course. Name wise, oh, I don't know. No, drilling vampire. What is it? Uh, cortisol, 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 cortisol vampire. What is? What is? Uh, what do? You, hmm, I don't quite understand that word. Cortisol. Cortisol. Define. What is cortisol? It's chemical. Hydrocortison. What does cortison do in the body? Is the steroid um, hormone it is the gluc glucanoid glucotoid? Uh, just tell me what it does. Animals mainly. No, I, I um, no, I think that seems. What does it do in the body? Hormone increases sugars, bloodstream, enhances brain glucose, increases substances and repairing tissues. Uh, no, I think we can just keep it the way it was. It seems fine to me. I don't see a problem at all. Seems fine. <laughs> um, when the creature is damaged, it temporarily becomes incorporeal. Really? Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's do that. And copy. And switch it back over here. Paste. We don't know have a name for that, but we'll we'll put it in, and uh, that sounds fine to me. Let's put that in. It's done. It's down. She's in. It's a it's a done deal. Oh, let's move this out of the way. Uh, okay. I I think I think people understand the word adrenaline more than they would um, understand um, cortisol. So I think we're all good. I don't think it matters in the slightest seeker. Uh, look, people, feel free to add your own stuff. I am going to do some work today myself. Emits fertilizing radiation. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, invert. Amazing. Oh man, that storm is going back crazy out there right now. All right. We're going to be at 100 in no time. In fertilizing. In, I don't know. With it might be too dark. I don't know what that. What is it? What, are, what, are we, what is the word that we're dealing with here? In fertilizing radiation. It might be too dark. What are, what are you concerned about? What, are, what is it that you've put down that's... Um, parent's bane, that's dark. Might be too dark. What, why is it too dark in fertilizing? Urban dictionary, medical... That affects one and several couple... I don't understand, so define. Define. Um, oh, whoops define fertilizing the action or process of fertilizing an egg no that's fertilization I want infertilization what are we what are we talking about here
I am lost. Uh, means like you fight the monster, but then you can't have children. Oh. <laughs> okay. You can't have children. That's a very, very unusual ability. I don't know, why would somebody be upset by that? Considering we've we come up with things, I mean, you look at the list of horrendous things our monsters can do right now. Um, emits sterility radiation. That's basically what you're talking about. And fertilizing or sterility. Oh god, that's not gonna st sterility radiation and fertilizing and fertile infertility infertility or sterility radiation. It's it's a it's a terrible thing for a monster to do, but look let's look we've got soul thief, the ability to attempt to steal a creature's soul. Are you telling me that Emitting in, uh, infertility or sterility radiation is not is is worse than stealing somebody's soul. <laughs> social media, people been growing up on social media way too long. They've got some weird things going on here. Um, okay, let's uh, we're leaving it in. Okay, uh, very suitable for a horror game, but um, pretty dark. Well, yeah. But, uh, I mean, a lot of people play dark games. I mean, uh, being in the creature's area slowly twists and deforms you. Well, that, that's, um, that's pretty dark. <laughs> let's, let's, let's stick that in. I, mean, I, I don't have a problem putting it in. Um, I mean, let's, let's get real. Monsters are supposed to do horrible things. That's why they're called mon monsters. <laughs> what it would it would I'm not I'm not giving anybody a hard time but I find it amusing that people um, get upset when we say oh we're creating monsters that do all these horrible things and they've got special powers but there's certain things that monsters should not be allowed to do um, like that's that's not the concept of a monster um, they'll be um, shit scared of it <laughs> or they won't care I mean, let's get real. How many people uh, in a role-playing game decide to have kids? Yeah, <laughs> it, do, it doesn't really happen. I <laughs> need to drop, drop some into chat so because I'll, I'll get darker. <laughs> That's right. Noroak will drop stuff in. Everybody will. And so will I. <laughs> Called a nutcracker. <laughs> nutcracker. <laughs> oh, God. I feel like it's not specifically targeted at males, okay? Oh, definitely. I'm a big fan of infertility uh, infertility idea. It is it is bizarre as dude, but it's 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 cool. It's still a cool idea. Let's let's keep it. So we're on 91. Now that so I want you look, there are certain things that when you put them into live chat I won't have issues with. Okay? But I'll let you know if you've gone too far. Um, and, and usually YouTube blocks most of those things before they go public anyway. And I can remove them if I need to, because I'm moderating my own live stream. So let's, let's have a look at some other things here that we can add in. Um, amorphous. No, 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 no. Um... Uh, did we have something that was like blind sight or blind sense? We probably did. Blind sight, blind sense. I'm, I'm sure we had something that allowed them to see in the dark. Like blind vision. It is going to take me forever to find all of it because I'd have to sort through it all. It would probably be something that we did early on. Blind, 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 blind. Blind. There are so many here. I have to put them all into alphabetical order at some point. Telepathy, eating thought, eats darkness, glows in the dark. Blind. Oh, 
I can't see it. Maybe we'd had, we've got x-ray vision, needs lead glasses, so we've got x-ray vision already, but we don't have blind? Well, we've got to have blind sense. Blind sight, blind vision, uh, blind senses. Blind sense, um, is that a, is that going to be an IP thing? Uh, can detect um, anything in um, anything with out it's really echolocation really blind sense blind uh, without using eyes and uses other senses I think that's what we're trying to say um, echolocation did we have echolocation I feel like we might have had echolocation Uh, water, allergy, venom, drinking, oh, okay, here we go, we've got some stuff coming in, okay, um, can detect, um, what is it, creatures, obstacles, I'll just put obstacles, using sound waves really that's what we've got okay so what do we got here that you've added in here that I need to add in um, so seekers next one we'll just copy and paste it straight across this is this this one right here and we'll paste that in Sweet. Water allergy venom. Water allergy venom. Drinking for the next week will incur penalty. I am a little confused. I am really confused by that. I put it in, but I don't understand what we're dealing with here. Yeah, I'm really confused by this one. Um, so yeah, a little bit, I'm a little bit lost on that one there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it, I, I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it until I can figure out how to rewrite it. Because I don't know what to do with that at all. <laughs> um, okay, so what do we got here? Um, have a great time continuing, continuing this. I'm... I'm coming away with uh, two great ideas: the Nutcracker and the Drill and Vamp. Enjoyed. Okay, I'm, I'm all good. That's great news. The creature, the creature doesn't need to sleep. Okay. So insomnia. Insomnia. We'll call it insomnia. Uh, the creature doesn't need to sleep. I think that's what you said. Insomnia. Um, apex adaption. The creature can grow new limbs and develop new traits to better suit its current environment. Apex adaption. So instead of regrowing limbs, because that's kind of like regeneration, we had a, re a limb regeneration thing going on already. Let's just take Apex Adaption and, um, and let's add in your second part of your concept there, um, Noroak. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying what you've done is bad. All I'm doing is I'm decoupling a bit of it. Um, I think that's that'll be fun to do it that way because we've still got the other one there. 
Um, the creature. Develops new traits to better suit its current developments. And that suit its current environment. Okay. I got it. It's in. It's down. Cause uh, fright, panic. Is that already? I'm quite late. Uh, it may well be. This is from last week. We may already have a frightening, um, a frightening present sort of thing going on here. Uh, that might have something that causes fear already. Um, I don't honestly know if we do or not. I, I'm a, I mean, I could cycle through this. It might take me forever to find it. So what we'll do is, if I have repeats, I will just take them out, okay? We'll just take them out if that's a repeat. Um, so causes fear. Causes fear and panic. Panic. If seen, I guess if you got to see it, if seen. I think that's what we're after. I'll put that down. Also, you're missing some charts, um, chats, Fred. Um, I think you're seated to the, you're set to the top, not live chat. My cloud um, mono filter idea above. Is it? Oh, okay. I may I may have missed it. Okay. Um, blind. The creature pull, uh Pulses a bright light in order to temporarily blind. Ah, okay. Blind. I will have to go back and have a look for it. It may well be. I'm on my phone and I've noticed the phone does not show everything up. Like on my phone, I can't see the, the, the poll. I can't see what's going on with the poll at all. And there are certain other things that don't come up as well. So, um, blind. The... Blinding. I think that's what we want to call it. It's blinding. Blinding the creature pulses a bright light in order to temporarily blind its en um, enemies. Good. All right. So let me just see if I can find it. Using the 5e rolls as a good way to um, describe monsters. I always enjoyed the that part of the system. It is a good way of breaking down a monster for, for, for sure. Breaking down a monster Absolutely, though, the concept of um, talking about the different roles is really helpful. The problem is, in 4E, they did not explain properly how to build monsters that operated like that. And I don't think they necessarily had developed that well enough. Uh, can cause a stampede. How? Like, what is it doing that causes a stampede? Uh, one of the things to remember is, like, how is it doing this? It's, there's, it's something's happening to cause it to do something. Um, and I, I noticed in modern Dungeons and Dragons, we, we have this tendency to build a mechanical concept or a narrative concept that makes absolutely no goddamn sense. It's ridiculous. Now, we're dealing with a fantasy game. So realism is not a big factor. But there's a point where, like, are we just putting it in there for the sake of putting it in there? So give me a bit more, um, Derry. It causes a stampede. How does it cause the stampede? Um, it's because the um, the setting at the top of chat is set to top chat. I'll bet. Um, anyway, let me see if that's the case. Top messages. Oh, okay. So if I go there. All messages. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Seeker. I have readjusted my, my setting. Um, confusion. The creature moves can confuse and disorient. You know, it sees. Okay, let's do that. And I am transitioning this over. We are almost to 100. I'm so glad that you didn't say refer to the confusion spell. It's one of the things that annoys me with uh, monster abilities is when somebody says refer to the confusion spell. <laughs> With fright auto effect, if it is less than. I'm, I'm lost on that one again, Derry. Um, 
Okay, so let me see. Let me see if I can find Seeker's chat that is missing. Um, 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 toggle moderator. No, 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 no. Millifant. I'm just going to just, oh, here we go. Millifant. Microfilament, microfilament. Microfilament. Where did you put it? Microfilament. Microfilament. Uh, parents bane. No. Uh, microfilament. Microfilament. Uh, microfilament. Oh, I'm struggling. Monster power. Moses leech. The adrenaline one. Um, soldier. Um, oh yeah, I don't see it. If you can type it back in, microfilament, then I'll stick it in. But I, I can't find it. It's it won't let me. It like won't let me do that for some strange reason. It's just not coming up. Um, okay, what have you got here, Norok? It could give off a f um, fair moon that causes nearby creatures into a panicking stampede. It's basically just ca ca um, causing fear. I mean, we've, we've got causes fear and panic, if seen, and then that, of course, it leads into a, a stampede, but we don't have to say anything about a stampede. I mean, it's it only going to affect, it's only going to cause a stampede if there's something to stampede, isn't it? So, yeah, I think we'll leave that as just causes fear and panic. Okay, cloud of monofilament tendrils. Uh, doesn't breathe these microscopic particles and then wriggle around and slice inside you. Ooh, yee, yee, yee. Okay, all right. Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> that, that is, that is some, that is some dark stuff there. All right, let's get, <laughs> let's get you before you, I get, get lost and lose it. Um, why is it not updating? For the life of me, it's just not, yeah, this is weird. Two, three, stampede. I can't see it. For the life of me, it's just not there. Okay. All right. I don't know what's going on. It's not helping. I'm going to have to type it in. Um. Uh, cloud of uh, monofilament. Tendrils. Um, uh, don't breathe these microscopic microscopic oh, it's, it's shifting um And or they wiggle, wriggle, wiggle, wriggle, wriggle, and slice inside inside you. That's pretty dark. <laughs> okay, water venom explanation. You get bitten, you still have to drink water, not to die, but it makes you ill. Uh, think how people with rabies can drink. I am a little lost on that one. Yin Yang. Water venom explanation. I'm lost on that one. Okay. A large animal group of fire from water. Causes an automatic stampede. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that. Don't breathe. That is, uh, that is pretty hor horrible. Um, yin yang. While in the sunlight, the creature is covered in shadows when in darkness the creature glows radiant light. Shredding lung. Uh, so I'm not putting anything, anything that refers to disadvantage, advantage, 
um, death saves. I'm not using any of that wordage. It's got to it's got to be something that I can put. You can put into any game system. So it's got to be for very sort of um, um, specific but general. So it, can, it has to be able to fit into any game system. So don't use 5e terminology, people, because I, I won't put it in. Okay, it just it's not going to happen at all. <laughs> at all, not going to happen. All right, so if, if, yin yang, okay, that's shown up now. So that gives us a hundred. So this is where I am going to uh, make a, ch a quick, a quick change, people. We are going to uh, make a uh, a slight variation in our approach. <clears throat> um, we've got a hundred now. Some of these will be more like traits than actually a special power. Okay. So I'm going to make up a, what I consider to be uh, more in line with um, a trait rather than it being a, a special power or ability. Now, that's where my head wants to go. That's where I think we should sort of focus on. Um, some of these will be, will be more like traits, okay, things that are always on. Uh, the, the special powers are things that it has to deliberately utilize. So uh, we're going to dissect some of this. So I'm going to make up a new um, I'm going to go here. Copy that. And I'm going to just start a new document. I, I, I did mention that we will probably wind up doing this. Okay. And it's very much my intention to do that is to actually make two tables one for monster special powers and abilities and one for monster traits that's traits or features i guess you might say so and i will i'll explain what i mean so it's it's clear okay so here a hundred monster traits or features and node recharging, it, um, uh, what's the best way to describe this? Always. So hold off on sticking your stuff in here so I can describe and um, explain what I'm trying to get you to do. Because we're going to go down a different rabbit hole. I had said that I wanted to deliberately expand this out so you had a lot more and um, that's exactly where my head is going so let me just find it monsters and I believe um, I had talked about features and traits in here and what's the best wording I can use because I've already figured all that out um, ah here we go so here we go this is what I was after so we've got assigning monster fe features and traits always in effect they're always on okay and then we've got powers and abilities which is going to be different okay so features and traits always in effect so something like being amphibious or amorphous it's always in effect it's always on does that make sense that's a very different and specific way of thinking in terms of your monster um, and if you're going to struggle with that, I un totally understand. So we're not thinking about powers now. We're thinking a little bit differently about how we approach this. Um, more. I need a number. And we're going to do 100 of these as well. And I think that's got that. And we're top of the hour, so I'm going to take a break. But I will type into chat kind of what I'm aiming for. Um, Monophilic cloud. Yeah, no, that's right. I, I totally understand. Bye all. Remember to thumbs up the video. Thank you, Seeker, for coming. He's probably already gone. Right, so here's where we're going for. Hashtag. Create. A monster. Trait. Or feature 
A lot of you understand the concept of trait from Dungeons and Dragons 5e, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting the word trait feature. That is always in effect. No recharge. Or limited resource. The the monster does not select to use it. It's just always going. I think that kind of gives you what I mean. It's not ambitious, it's doable. We've already got a whole bunch that already exists in um, the other table that are probably traits rather than, and then um, special powers, okay? No, 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 Norok, we're, this is the traits now. The other one, remember, see it has in the top, it had at the top, can recharge, not always available, okay? Um, consciously. use that's what it's that's what we got there so for example um can swim in normal uh, amphibious amorphous these here are always things that it can do so they will actually be traits so we go cut as you can see and i'm going to just do that and these would actually just go into here because those are actually traits does that make sense? Okay. All right. I think people have got the idea. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in about less than five minutes. That gives you time to type some stuff in there, and then I'll try to catch up. And, um, yeah. And if there's anything that you, if you come up with a power and it's not really a trait, I'll put it into the other list. So it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world, so don't freak out. Five minutes or less, I'll be back.
it's always funny listening to um, my brother-in-law occupying uh, Amelia on a rainy, stormy hurricane um, filled with... <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hoot, I have to say. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look, see what we've got here. Fly by, fly by. Flying, swimming, is it swim by for swimming. I'll be back in 15, not a problem. I'll re-roll. Um, okay, so flying. So flying, I don't think we actually have flying as a, a thing that works all the time. So that's flight. Absolutely. Um, Fred, that makes perfect sense. Flight. Let's, uh, let's, let's put that in. Um, I don't think I've got flight here. Fly or flight. I'll just have a quick look down. Ah, uh, fly, flight, fly, 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 fly. If, 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 fly. That's uh, breathing fire. Uh, X ray vision. I feel like that's more like a trait. So we'll cut that out. And I don't see flight anywhere. So, no, we don't have flight. So we can put the flight in there. Which is good. So let's go. Flight. Can fly a set distance. Okay. Um, and that might be miles. I'm not talking about squares or feet or anything silly like that. It could be miles. Um, double. Double headed. Um, prone to argue with each other unless fighting. Then they are fo um, focused on two nearby targets as a time at a time. When not fighting, heads look to around so they have to yell to each other's head. I, I don't know what to do with that. Um, Derry, I don't know what to do with that. Try to think try to think in terms of a trait or a feature. So an example, I suppose, I need to give you some examples. Um, what would be breathe underwater? Okay. So let, what, breathe underwater. That would be a trait or a feature. It's always an effect. Okay? It's, it's like a fish. A fish doesn't turn off its ability to, to breathe underwater. So that would be a trait. Does that make sense? Oh, I see what you're talking about. Hello, Michael. How's it going? Michael is a patron. Welcome for coming. How, um, hopefully you had a good day so far. Flyby is to boost... Um, a boost is, is a boost to something that has flight. I'm late and I thought flight would be third on the list. Yeah, 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 nah. Um, I, 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 I'm not putting it into order right now. Oh, you're talking about the Eden round table feature. That's, that would be more of a power. That's more of a power you're talking about there. That's really complicated. You're going to have to simple it, shrink it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do here, um, Fred, is I'm going to take your flyby um, idea. What is flyby actually supposed to do? It's going to boost flight, but what is it actually trying to do? I have a place for you right here. Um, can... Phase jump like Misty Step. Nacho. Phase jump like Misty Step. Phase jump. Now the thing is the phase jump is probably... Um, I think we had something like Misty Step already. Like teleportation. We've already... It's a power. I don't think that's a trait. Because it's something you would probably have to think about deciding to do. Because you, otherwise you would always be f um, phasing. You would always be in phase. Unless what your intention is, Nacho, is that the creature is always um, phasing or out of phase, so it's it's more difficult to strike. 
if that's what you're trying to or connect with or you can't connect with it or something like that because i think teleport kind of does that already we've got something that's kind of like misty step as part of a power rather than under the traits you're gonna you guys are gonna struggle with the traits so I, I totally get it um if you come up with something that's a power then i think i can put it into the power list i'll put it on the power list uh you're suffering normal lag oh okay um what have we got here I watched the video about the Eden round table never really heard about that monster didn't you it's because it's like mr. Welsh said it's basically just a couple of lines a couple of words actually uh, in um, Tolkien's um, book and <laughs> that's that's where the Eton came from the the Eton is, is, is basically a two-headed troll uh, that's really all it is so let's let's keep moving if we can i'm pretty sure we had a breath weapon in the last one so we don't need to worry about that um oh now this is a this is a hard one blood frenzy is blood frenzy a trait or a power now, blood frenzy is like the shark um i think it's a trait or a feature this is the frenzy uh when the creature senses blood it becomes more aggressive Hmm. I'm going to put up the question mark beside that. I'm not. I'm not convinced that's a trait, but I want to duplicate the shark's blood frenzy thing. You know. You know when it goes into a into sort of a uncontrolled attack mode. Basically, that's what. That's the shark, right? Trait bark skin. Yes. Bark skin would be a trait, yes, because the bark skin is never disappearing. You should always have the bark skin. So, um, uh, bark, um, 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 a bark, what do I want to call it? Bark shell or skin. The creature has a layer of protective bark over its body. Dairy, well done. That's definitely it. Corrode metal. Yes. Now you're starting to realize if, look, the easiest way for those of you who are struggling is just pick up the monster manual and just look at the traits section in the monsters. It's the easiest way to pull a lot of this stuff out. It's it really, that's probably the easiest way. So corrode metal. Corrode metal. Um... The creature causes um, now what's the easiest way acid saliva that's a trait shiner 81 that's right acid saliva absolutely I'll come back to that saliva Traits are much harder to come up with. The saliva creature's mouth is acidic. Um, 
and eats everything. So this is basically the blood. Um, I mean, you could say, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the blood. So what will go acidic saliva, um, but there's also acid blood. You, you, if you're, you're thinking back to the alien movies, acid blood is, um, is another one we can go with if you wanted to. False appearance. Now we won't be able to call it false appearance. It'll have to be called something else. But yes, you got the right idea. False appearance would be a trait. So, um, let's just go fake appearance. Easy enough. Um, the creature um, appears as something is something um, else that is natural or made, manufactured. There you go. That is a trait. Oh, that's not quite the way I want to do it, though. Manufactured. Um, the creature causes now the easiest way to do this is uh, rust corrode metal it's just rust and I think we just call it rust rust define because corrode metal is one thing but we know what rust means right um, iodization Oxidization, oxidization of it, okay. Rust. Um, the creature causes oxidization of metal that touches it. So it doesn't. It doesn't have to actually touch anything. It's always on. You touch the thing, it rusts. That's 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 a trait. Yep, absolutely. Um, some symbiosis, norok. What do you got here? The creature has a parasitic swarm living inside it. While the creature is um, hunting, or if it is attacked, the swarm emerges to aid it. The swarm helps digest its food. Oh, okay symbiotic so it's not got control of it it's just part of its its nature i see where you're going with this it's not really a power because you don't get to decide when you're doing anything with it um it is always going to be active i see where you're going with that makes sense i'm going to just copy paste that because that's a long and you've done a pretty good job of breaking that down so let's go here and put it in. Uh, what's this? Edward. Nice hat, bro. Thank you. Uh, it is my ma magician's hat. It is my game master hat, my dungeon master hat. It is, it is ho hiding my bald head. <laughs> uh, keen smell. Now, we yes, keen smell. We we can add. That's that's definitely a trait. Now. We won't be able to call it keen smell. So what would you call keen smell if you weren't be able weren't able to use the word keen smell? Because it's essentially Dungeons and Dragons 5e, right? So we don't want to rip off this stuff completely. Um, unless, of course, you do want to rip off this stuff completely. Um, so keen smell would be, what would it be called instead? Um... I think keen smell high percents it's got to be around high percents high, now what does high percents mean because high percents is it's around smell so let's 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 go with the smell kind con concept to find smell 
big nose. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so scent, smell, synonym, definition, smell of... S right, so this is going to be organs smell. Uh, no, it's snuff, breathe, snort, sniff. Well, we don't want that. Um... We can just call it um, odor sense. Um, what can we call it? It's smell, basically. Odor, sense, hypersense, big nose, um, spiky, the creature has spikes growing from its body, yes, um, has a very strong, um, Got to go here. Flutory nerves that detect um, smell sensitivity. Sensitive sensitivity. I think you've got it. I think you got it there. Well done. Well done, G um, um, dearie. Smell sensitivity. Um, has a very strong off the tree nerve that detects sense a long um, long way off and that are hard to detect. Let's do that. Okay, now, spiky. Let's put the spiky one in. So the spikes never go away. So that's what I mean by a trait. It's something that's always there. And then paste. Good, nice, well done. And and slick material, slick slime, slick. Yes, that's that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Oh man. Copy that. <clears throat> uh, chuck that over here. So slick. The creature's covered in slick. Material or slime. There we go. Not bad. Good job. Well done. Um, edge ward. Edge ward. Edge ward. Uh, so what else we got here? Dimwitted, intelligence and wisdom are five, um, four to five, makes decisions based on only bodily desires. Trait, no, I feel like that's tied into the, the maths of the monster. It's not really, I don't want to, I don't want to have a thing that sort of says, oh, it's, it's a stupid monster. Um, I feel like that can be done at the attribute and ability um, uh, level. Whereas this is, 
this is this is something else. We're trying to do. We're trying to achieve something slightly different here. Um, odor. The creature has a very pungent aroma, which causes waves of no noxious gas to infiltrate the senses of creatures nearby. Not attacking it, but nearby. Let's do that. Yes. Odor. Noxious odor. Copy. Let's put that in. I like the idea. It's a good idea, Shiner. So, um, you always want to have a monster that has a noxious odor. <laughs> uh, noxious odor. The creature has a, pung a very pungent aroma which causes waves of no um, um, noxious noxious gases to irritate the senses of creatures nearby. I think I just made a slight adjustment to it, but I think that's kind of what you're trying to get across. So that's always on, it's always there. That's exactly what we're after. Very good, people. You traits are much harder to come up with but we've actually probably got a lot in the power section anyway so it's not so bad glowing eyes its eyes glow its eyes glow now why would that be a good thing it's just a trait that it has yeah that is just a trait that it has okay yeah fair enough because some creatures do actually have eyes that glow but it doesn't have any purpose outside of that uh it's um, the creature's eyes glow in the dark. <clears throat> no, you didn't stipulate dark. You just said they glow. I think that's what you were wanting. We don't need to have dark, do we? The, the creature's eyes glow. Whether it's dark or not dark, it's just going to glow. Yeah. Sweet. Let's do that. Done. It's in. Cool. Sweet. Love it. Good job. Um, all right, so uh, brutal, brutal. The creature. Uh, no. Do I want that? I don't necessarily think I want that. <clears throat> this is more something else. Um, glowing eyes. Brutal. Oh, it's a hard one, this one. This is a hard one. Um, I don't... Because brutal would just wind up being... Strong. And strong can be can be telegraphed. We don't need to have a, a trait or a feature that says that. We can just have it. Um, no. I don't know. I'm going to leave it as a question mark. I'm not sure what to do with that. I'm, I'm thinking that it will just stay out. Um... Chameleon. So, chameleon camouflage. I'm thinking camouflage or chameleon. So, um, which is going to be the better use of the word? Let's do this. Something that can it can hide and it's it can change its appearance so that it looks like its environment, but at a color level rather than in a, a transformation of shape. That makes sense. So go here, camouflage to fine. Uh, chameleon. So chameleon is a thing, but it's not what it's actually doing. Camouflage is different. Uh, Camo. Large. Um, disguise. 
Um, so that's what I think we need is we need camouflage because camouflage is that a trait? It's always on. You never run out of it. I think that's what we want. Camouflage. Cam. Mo. Camouflage. 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 No. Camouflage. Okay, so the creature can uh, change change color to blend that's all that we want to do is just that and I think that's the way and color to blend British English Color. Okay, the creature can change color to blend into their surroundings. That's what I want. Okay. Uh, okay, so I got that sorted. Right, that was not too bad. We got all, we did all right with that one. Um, we're coming near to the end of this for today. But we've actually done pretty well. Inverted legs helps to run faster. Inverted legs... Okay, so that's not something that's going to run. That's just the nature. It's a trait. So inverted, inverted legs. Um, the creature can run faster. Do we need that though? Faster. Um, I'm going to put a question mark and a little thing beside it. I'm not too sure what to do with that. It's, it's, yeah, it's not the same as that one though. Um, that's a different leap. I'm not too sure. This is, I'm just wondering if we really need to have that. Is it necessary? It may not be necessary. I feel like we can just represent that by how fast it moves and that's it and it's done. It doesn't need to be necessarily a trait. Um, anyway. Moving down here, um, has a pre prehensile pretensile pre prehensile tail long enough to lash out five um, five feet behind. No, no, no. Um, I think I think I got what you want. Um, pre ten ten god pretensile. How do I spell this? Pretensile. Pretensile. No, that's not it. Okay, let's let's solve that problem and let's see if you've got it. You probably spelled it right, and I've spelled it wrong. Um, prehensile. Prehensile. It is prehensile. It is. Prehensile. Okay. So, um, prehensile. Prehensile tail. Um, so this is going to be uh, the creature has a tail that can attack and is capable of grasping um, something. Objects or creatures. That's what I think you were trying to say. Good. Nice. Done. It's in. Um, toothy. The creature has several layers of teeth. But what is it doing? It's It's got that what is it actually going to do? What else are we? Do? What are we doing with this? 
This is that's a hard one. That one. Um, I'm going to put it in, and I'm not too sure what to do with it. I'm going to put a question mark beside it um, as well. Because traits kind of have to suggest that they're doing something as well, right? Um, and I'm going to put a question mark because I'm not too sure what to do with this. And I'm not too sure how to describe what you're trying to do here. Toothy. Uh, yeah, I am a little unsure. Okay, so we're going to have to finish it up here. So don't don't chuck any more stuff in, people. Because I will have to, um, I'll get, I'll wind up with a whole lot of stuff that I miss out on. And it always mirrors the environments, cam camo assists in hiding in. Um, I see what he's trying to say here. I think that, does, I don't think we need to, uh, we don't, we need, to, we don't have to give it to mirrored surface. I don't think that's necessary. Um, good timing uh, for ending, got a, got a prep dog food, no problems. Um, cute eyes, it's eyes disarm those that see it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I know that's a joke, dude. Uh, I get it. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's a nice job. Well done. Um, <laughs> jeez, <laughs> should have guessed. Uh, anyway, um, let's let's get on with the the the, the process of really going to work. We've done pretty well. Look, we'll come back and we will finish this. Um, I'm talking about a monster that I've been um, f killing myself whether I should talk about it or not. So we're going to come back to that tomorrow, which means we'll probably come back to doing this. Okay, we'll continue this process and I'll transfer a few things over and we will get there eventually. It'll happen. Um, to <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, let's end this poll. I think it's it's clear to um to everybody that we we definitely want some uh, monster powers and some monster traits, and a nice big table of both is a is a good good place to go. Um, so so let's let's uh sign us out and uh, and move on with our day, and I'll go to work in the storm, in the cyclone. So I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. It does make a huge difference. I do appreciate it. I want to thank also World Anvil for sponsoring this live stream. It's been very hard to get people to sponsor the live streams and they were willing to do so. So thank you very much. You'll find all the information for them down in the description. I want to thank everybody who showed up for the live stream today, uh, participated in the poll, took part and presented their ideas for scrutiny <laughs> uh, in the live chat. Everybody who just watched and listened, I do appreciate it. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been re-watching the live streams as well. If you're not here for the actual live stream, thank you for doing so. And uh, watching those um, edited videos and the putting up with those shorts videos. Because, core blimey, um, I haven't done any for a while, but I should be. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get myself into a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, anyway, wherever you are in the world, I hope that you currently are not suffering from a storm a cyclone, a hurricane, a volcanic eruption, an earthquake, or anything crazy like that right now, because currently I have a cyclone outside. Um, so hopefully you are safe. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. Batten down the hatches and tape those windows. And hey, till next time, Keep rolling those twenties. <laughs> Absolutely, Noroak. It was a good laugh. <laughs>